Look at this. 105 pages, just hot off the press. What you see here in my hands right now, it's either the greatest thing that has ever been written or it's steaming hot garbage. <laughs> I don't think it's either of those. I don't think it's the greatest thing ever written and I also don't think that it is garbage. Uh, it's either pretty good or it's just okay. And my biggest fear is that it's just okay. But if it does end up just being okay, you know, it's my first time running a movie. But then again, I'll probably be shattered. Although it's not totally finished, I felt like it was at a good enough place to print it out. So I didn't have to keep reading uh, on a screen constantly and giving myself migraines. But man, does, does it feel good to have that physical copy in my hands? I literally, stood there watching the printer as it printed late at night the other night, just watching page by page come out and little tears started to trickle down my eye. It was a big moment for me. I'm dying to tell you what it's called. I'm dying to tell you all about the concept and everything, but I'm still so far away from production. I'm afraid that there's a bunch of narcs out there who'll jack my idea, so. Gonna, gonna hold back for now. But I will say it's very dark, yet very funny coming of age. Obviously there's a ton of coming of age stories, that's nothing new, but I feel like the way I wrote it and the way I wanna shoot it, I don't know if I've seen it um, done before. So I'm excited about it. So because I can't sit here and say how to write a successful first movie script. I mean, I don't know if this thing's good or not. I'm the only one person who's read it, hasn't been made into anything. It might be total crap like I mentioned. But what I can speak to today is my experience in writing my first movie script and give you some advice on how to have a positive experience when writing your first movie. And that's exactly what mine was. Mine was a truly great positive experience. And as I continue on and take on different parts of the process of creating your first movie, I'm gonna go ahead and make videos on those certain aspects because I think it'll be really helpful and interesting for filmmakers out there who are kind of in the same position boat as me. So I have 10 really solid pieces of advice for you to have a great positive experience in writing your first screenplay. As you've been realizing, this video is just going to be me talking. I'm not gonna add any other bits of things into this. So if, you, if you're if you not enjoying my face, go ahead and just walk around and act like this is a podcast. So my first bit of advice is to not force anything. There's absolutely no rush. I've known for a while now that I wanted to make something bigger than what I've been making, more than commercials, short documentaries, music videos. I wanted to make something that I could sit down on my, my couch with my family and enjoy and be really proud of and share with the world. And I knew that one thing was going to be a narrative feature film. About five months ago, this idea just organically came to my head. I wrote it down few weeks passed of thinking of other ideas and whatnot, and I, I came back to this idea and I was like, you know what, that's a really good idea. I'm gonna act on it and that was it. And I wish I had more advice on how to come up with those ideas, but just wait around and I can <laughs> go for walks and they hit you right in the head. So my next piece of advice is once you have your, your concept, Spend a lot of time ideating on it. Making a movie is a culmination of a lot of ideas. You need a ton of ideas in order to make this huge creative piece of work. I once saw an interview with the creator of Fleabag, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who said that before she writes anything in a cohesive manner, she goes ahead and ideates and writes down every single joke, any single idea that comes to her head up on a board. And she has all these different ideas before she ever starts writing. She's obviously incredible, so I took her advice. And for a month, I would write down everything that came to my head, whether it was organically or set aside time to actually ide ideate on, whether it was exposition, character development, things that could happen, different season ideas, different jokes that I find personally funny. I don't know, I watched a ton of movies, read a ton of articles, read books, do whatever you need to do to get those juices flowing, write down a ton of ideas so that when you do actually go to write, you have a lot to work with. So that leads nicely into my third bit of advice, which is to write down memories that happen from your own life. Any successful writer, if you listen to them speak or interview, almost every single one will tell you to write what you know. You have to write the things that you know. It's what's going to bring authenticity to your story. The most 
creative people in the world wouldn't be able to come up with some of the shit that actually happens to you on a day-to-day -day basis. Some of those things are just like unimaginable, right? I took the time to think about all those things that happened to me, the most embarrassing moments of my life, the hardest moments of my life, some things that brought me the most joy, uh, conversations that I had 10 years ago that still keep me up with anxiety at night. All those memories, all those things that personally happened to you or someone that was super close to you, those are gonna be the secret sauce, the, the ingredients that are going to make, you know, whatever you're writing super special. So my fourth bit of advice for you, once you feel like you have all these ideas and memories, uh, the next thing that you're gonna need is a bit of structure. Most stories that you've ever seen have followed a specific structure. So what I did was downloaded a simple save the cat beat sheet off the internet. You don't have to use save the cat. There's a bunch of story structures out there. I'm not like a story structure expert. It was just available on the internet to download. So I just download it. I don't even know where I got it from. I just Googled it. The most important part for me was kind of having a general idea of where I want to start and a general idea of where I wanted my story to end up. So having that point A and point Z, I could, th I could then take all my ideas that I come up with and start to place them in kind of like a chronological order and kind of create an outline to fit this story structure. And at first, you know, I tried to be really thorough with this process, uh, but then as I started to write, I realized that it didn't need to be so thorough. And that leads into my fifth bit of advice, which is to just start writing your story and see where it takes you. I saw a story interview with Stephen King where he talks about he doesn't like knowing the ending of his story because how could he know the ending of his story? He talks about when he writes, he is kind of seeing the story unfold as he goes. You know, I had this idea and I, I thought I had a really good idea of where I wanted my story to go. But as I started writing, I started to learn more about the characters. I started to learn more about the decisions they would make, the things they would say, the places they would end up, and the story really did start to unravel as I went. It's really hard to explain. You really just like get into your story. You become a part of your story and your subconscious is kind of leading the charge. The things that are on the forefront of your brain don't know what's going to happen next, but your subconscious is kind of doing all the magic for you. So I would say have a good plan, outline, kind of figure out like a general story structure, but don't feel like you need to stick to it. Figure out where the story is going to go as you write. And that leads into my next tip, which is how to actually get yourself to start writing. How do you start writing? That blank page, it's so empty yet so full of challenge. Watched another interview with Taika Waititi, who is one of my favorite directors and writers. And he said that any first draft he ever writes, he just goes at it, starts, and he goes at it by hand. He writes everything out first by hand with pen and paper. I figured if it works for Taika, I might as well give it a shot. So I took this old notebook, ripped out any used pages that I had with inside it, wrote the name of my movie in black. I just started plugging away. Yeah, I sat down, just started writing. No page restrictions, no judgment, just wrote and wrote and wrote whatever came to my mind freely. The pen and the paper was so nice because it was slow and sloppy. It, it didn't feel like it was official. It didn't feel like it was formal. It felt like I could be free with my ideas and like nothing I wrote was gonna be like permanent forever. Because it was so slow, it's so much slower than typing. It gives you more time to digest and think about what might come next. Think about, you know, what you actually wrote and kind of understand your story better. Doing that, I was probably able to write out my entire first draft in like 10 days. I never felt like I was struggling. It felt natural. I really enjoyed it. It's not done. It wasn't done on the first draft, obviously. It wasn't super co cohesive. Not everything made sense. Uh, some of it was actual just like literal crap. It, but it felt good and it was super encouraging to have that first draft written. My seventh piece of advice is to create a space and environment for yourself to write your best work and to actually be immersed within your story and be totally sucked away from reality. Being able to write on my notebook, there's not notifications popping up left and right. There's not the urge to go to YouTube, check your email. I would lock myself in this office, close the door, turn on some classical music, pop open a 
flavored sparkling water. Been leaning store brand, raspberry lime. It's kind of been the theme for this whole process right here. I'll take a sip. I'm get parched. Close the blinds, turn the light out. Don't let your partner, don't let your dog, don't let anything interrupt you while you're writing the story because you need to be in the story. You can't be where you are. When I'm writing the dialogue for characters, I'm sitting in here talking to myself, which is both embarrassing and necessary. Like do whatever you need to do to, to prevent self-sabotage. Do not let reality creep in because it's gonna make writing this story so much harder for you. And if there are moments where that reality creeps in and you're not able to push it back out, take a break, go for a walk, take a shower. I took a ton of showers during this process. Or do whatever you need to do to feel comfortable. That leads very nicely into today's sponsor who is Cuts. Now I live in Hawaii. As many of you know who've been watching this channel for a while, I don't have central AC in my apartment. There's no AC in this office. It's the middle of the day. I'm on the top floor. It's cooking in here right now. It's probably up around 80 degrees inside this room with the lights and everything going. And yet here you are seeing me still rocking my, my cut sweatshirt, my hoodie classic. I do most of my writing in the morning, late at night when it's a lot colder. To get to my most extreme creativity level, I need to be working in a cold environment and when I'm working in those cold environments, I need to have hoodie protection. I love throwing the hood up, just feeling comfy inside my own body so I can be inside my own head. And this is the hoodie that I've worn throughout the entire process. I wear Cuts t-shirts, now Cuts joggers, Cuts sweatshirts, uh, and be an incredible gift for those of you still seeking gifts for your friends, families, partners, uh, whatever or whoever it may be for Christmas or any other holiday that you celebrate. I'm half Jewish. I used to celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas. You might be giving them the gift that sends them on their way to creating their first ever movie. That'd be amazing. Check out the link in my description below. Take 15% off of my discount code. Advice bit number eight. Now that you have your first draft written by hand, it's now time to put it into proper formal script format online, which is something that was totally new to me, something I had never done before. Uh, so what I used was uh, studiobinder.com. They have free software that helps you write in script format for those of you who have never done it before. You don't have to use that. There's other ones out there. I think like Final Draft is like the main one that people use. And now it's daunting to have to actually write things in like actions and, and dialogue form. So what I did was actually download a bunch of screenplays and PDF files from movies I loved and that I kind of saw within the same genre of what I was kind of trying to create. And I read through those. I was able to see how uh, the writers of these screenplays were directing actions, how they were writing dialogue. And that was also just super helpful. Uh, for me to actually put everything in the script format. So going into my next bit of advice, tip number nine, uh, while I was actually, you know, writing my second draft and formalizing and putting it into the script, uh, it felt like it was permanent. I was putting it actually into official script form and that caused me to go on that crazy roller coaster of emotions, of doubt, of loving it, of hating it, of is this good? Does this make sense? Oh, this is the greatest thing I've ever written. This is the stupidest thing I've ever read and just constantly went in that wave. The one thing that got me through those blocks of doubt of every time I questioned myself of whether this was good or not uh, was something that any great screenwriter would say and that I have seen a ton of great screenwriters say is that you're making this movie for one person and that person is you. You need to make a movie that you yourself would wanna see. So every time I got stuck, I would remember I am making this movie for one person. I am making this movie for me. If I was an audience member, would I enjoy this scene? Would I laugh at this joke? Would I be touched by this moment? And if the answer was no, get it out of here. If the answer was yes, it's all that matters because I'm making this movie for me. And I think reminding myself of that was the biggest factor in me having a very positive experience in writing my first ever movie. Tip number 10, my last bit of advice, is that I'm learning that you need to give your script room to breathe. 
what I printed out is probably the 10th iteration of my script. And even from the time I print it to the time I'm recording this, I've gone through three other iterations. The more I write and the more I take a step back from it and then come back to it, I see areas of improvement, ways to make it better. So don't get married to your first go around because things are gonna change. You have to let it breathe. You have to think about it from other perspectives, see it on a different day. So yeah, that's all the advice I gotta give from someone who's only written one screenplay. <laughs> Again, obviously I don't know if this thing is any good. I'm not saying that these are tips and advice to make a great first screenplay. I'm just giving you advice on how to have the most positive experience that you can in writing your first screenplay because I really do feel like mine was that a great positive experience. I'm gonna make this thing into an actual movie. Whether it's good or not, it's going to be made. It's going to be made in 2022. Uh, and I guess I just gotta figure out how to fund that. So any millionaires are watching this and wanna help your boy out, go ahead and shoot me a DM or something. <laughs> Yeah, excited to have you all along for the process. Thanks for watching. I love you.